Hey guys, what's going on? Just brought you out here today do a little rundown of the new 2018 YT Jeff C. This is the base model, the cheapest one you can get. I wanted to show you guys what it's about so you can make up your mind whether you want to buy it or not. Um, it's a great bike. It's got a lot of cheap parts on it, but they chose them very well. So I'll show you what it's all about and give you a little, little highlight video. So yeah, let's get after it. Also guys, expect some bike checks coming on the channel soon. We got all the boys building up their bikes for the coming season. As you can see, there's still snow on the ground. I got some deity stuff coming in for this. So we'll do that when the time comes. And also, we got a nice remedy build come in. We'll do a commensal bike check, but yeah, let's get to it. All right, so before I start, the bike does come fully matte. So if you see any gloss that is tape I've put on it, I'm coming out the video soon on how to do that, protect your bike for cheap. So check that out. But our first notable talking point here about this bike is the E13 cassette and SLX drivetrain. It's a very non-conventional option and YT chose to spec all their bikes this cassette. And I was a little bit skeptical, but after using it for a little bit, um, I'm going to have to say that I was very, I was pretty much blown away by it. It's just very smoothly and the range is more than you can ask for. As some of you guys know, GX Eagle or XX1, all the Eagle stuff from SRAM has a 500% range. This actually has a 511% range. With the smallest cog, which is the hardest gear to pedal in, being a 9-tooth instead of a 10, so you get that extra low end. You can run a smaller chain ring up front, and you still have a 46 up top, so you get that nice easy climbing gear. And that's matched to a race face affect crank, which once again isn't a very expensive option, but it does the trick and has no problem doing what it needs to do, which isn't very much. But it's stiff enough, and I have no complaints about that either, so now we'll move on to the suspension. So for our rear shock, we have a Fox Flow DPS. It's the base model shock. It does have a three position switch here. So you have climb, trail, and descend, whatever they call it these days. In open mode, it is pretty supple for what it is. It's not a, doesn't have a piggyback, so it might heat up a little bit on long descents, but it's pretty supple off the top and does have good mid stroke. And I think you can put volume spacers in, but this bike doesn't really need it because it's very progressive. And uh, we'll move on to the fork now. So the fork on this is a Fox 34 Rhythm, which is their cheapest model. It does have black sanctions, which looks sweet, match the rest of the bike. But the damper is actually pretty sophisticated for how cheap this fork is. It's very composed, and it doesn't have any modes on it, but it does have a compression switch right here. So you can dial in the feel you want. This is low-speed compression, so you can make it feel a little bit more firm, and you can fully lock it out, which is very rigid. I wouldn't recommend using that because I don't know why you want your fork locked out when you're on the climb. You want your front end to dive. Get a little better position but uh yeah great fork for the money air spring obviously can put volume spacers in it and it's pretty stiff for what it is and i haven't had any complaints about it yet another pretty notable point about this bike is the e13 dropper which once again i had never used before and isn't that common but i'm pretty impressed with it so far it doesn't have infinite adjust as you can see you have your bottom position one there one there one all the way up I found it to be just fine and it is a mechanical locking system as well as it has a spring inside instead of a hydraulic system like the reverb and it's actually it's kind of refreshingly simple it works very well gets the job done and has had no issues yet and the lever is also very nice all right guys so as you can see the dropper lever is a very refined design very simple but elegant and it mimics a shifter it's compatible with SRAM matchmaker so it mounts right to your brake lever which is nice and clean it's also adjustable this way as well as being able to position this lever for aft like this you just loosen a screw back here you get exactly where you want it and it has a grip tape on it as well it's probably my favorite dropper lever i've ever used and it works perfectly it has tension adjust right here to get your tension dialed so the post doesn't slip and uh yeah overall really like it and can't wait to use it more all right guys so last but not least we'll talk about the wheel set and tires it is a dt swiss e1900 wheel set straight pull spokes 28 hole front and rear and the only thing i have to complain about really is the hub it doesn't have the highest points of engagement but most people won't even notice that and it's really not a hindrance unless you're on super techie climbs and even then you can get over it but uh the tires also high roller front and rear 2.4 xo casing so more than enough for a trail bike pretty sturdy sidewalls and the front is actually a 3c which i was happily surprised to find out so super super tacky up front and um i'll back single compound so it'll roll nice and fast a great combo for just about anywhere so yeah guys, that's about it. I hope you like this. Um, if you're looking into this bike, I'd highly recommend it. I was a little bit underwhelmed at first because I was, you know, I'm used to a little bit higher end bike, but after getting this, I'm very happy with it. Have absolutely nothing to complain about, and it's a super energetic, fun bike. You can feel the pace for sure. I can't wait till the snow melts to really give it a proper testing. But uh, yeah guys, hope you liked the video, and if you did, please subscribe, like, and comment.